Fusion Web UI. First thing you'll want to do is log into Hypergator. So I've already created a, uh, an alias in my bash uh, configuration file that allows me to just just type hgator. Um, you'll see in the documentation what the actual long form of that command is. It's ssh space your username hpg.rc.ufl.edu. So this is just a shortcut for that and it'll ask me for my password. Put that in and choose my authentication method. And once you do that, you can log in. Uh, next thing that I'll need to do is I need to uh, mount the blue drive, move to my working directory. Uh, I've already have an alias in my home account for that, uh, but I'll just do it the long form way. So blue, um, uh, coda, dept, and S-A-A-H, and dinner and projects and I'll just go there ls-al and you'll see those, those are all the projects that I have listed uh, and the one I want to work on is my stable diffusion web UE one so ls-al there's all the files that I have inside here I'm going to get rid of this previous output file that I created in here and uh, in order to run a project like this, uh, you have to get involved a little bit with uh, batch scripts. And I have examples of batch scripts that you can download using Git on uh, my GitHub uh, repository. Uh, the wiki for research computing also provides some examples. Uh, but this is a, an example batch script right here. And I'll want to uh, take a look at that. So I'll go nano sbatch and take a look and you'll see that it has all sorts of stuff in here it has the email address so it'll give me a notification when the job starts and when the job ends i can select uh, the type of processor that I, or gpu that i want to use amount of memory that i think i'll need uh, here's where you would put coda depth uh, coda dash depth if that was the account you're using uh, and then if you're using uh, whatever group you're in so on this one, just for this purpose, I'll, I'm using ART4630. Uh, and then you'll see here, it's going to write out an output file that I can monitor to, to keep track of what's happening in the, in the project as I run it. So uh, this is it. So I don't really need to change anything on this one, so I'll just close this out. And then to run this batch script, what I'll do is I'll go sbatch and then pass it that, uh, that shell script that I've created and you'll see that it uh, creates a job number also notice that i'm right now currently i'm in the login node which is where i don't want to be running my actual applications i want to run them in an actual uh, node that's not a login node and so when i run a batch script that's what this does it creates a new job it puts it on an actual uh, workable uh, a cpu node that i want to uh, that i can work with uh, and then what I want to do is I want to go tail dash F and I'm going to pass it the uh, name of that output file. I just have a, uh, a wild card here so that because I know I only have one output file in here. And so you can see what the batch what this batch has begun is, is it's created a shell tunnel command for me. So I can copy that and I come into a different terminal window now and I paste my shell tunnel command there. And I'll do the same thing. I'll log into that. And well, uh, we now have ourselves a tunnel. And what this tunnel does is it allows us to have access to this, uh, this uh, URL right here in a browser. And so I'll copy this URI and I'll put it into a, a browser over here and paste it in. And it may take it a little while to queue up. You can see here it, it until it loads all the model some of the models that we're using are several gigabytes seven or eight gigabytes in size and so when you first launch the project it might take it a few minutes to actually load the load the project so i'll just kind of let this sit for a second while it's loading uh, notice here this is the github page for uh, stable diffusion web ui uh, and so i've already cloned this into my working directory on uh, 
on the blue drive. And so what we're running, this has all already been previously installed into my account by following the instructions here for installation. Uh, and so, but now that we have it installed and we're running it on Hypergator, hopefully here in just a second, it will uh, load up and let us begin. UI, my password, there we go. And voila. All right, so we are monitoring our uh, output file from our batch session. And let us try a couple of things. Here is a prompt. I've pasted into the uh, prompt box here. Male and female teachers struggling to work on a computer. Angry, ham hammer in hand, explosion, parts flying everywhere. And I've selected a, a sampler. I've selected the Hewn sampler. And I know that that one works pretty well around 30 steps. I've set my resolution to 960 by 1088. Batch size is four. We'll create four of these. Uh, the seed is uh, negative one, which means it's random. So it will replace previous uh, iterations of the run. And then I have enabled a, a script called StylePile, which allows you to um, shape the way that the prompt is constructed uh, as it's or, it, or before it's sent to the actual processor. So, uh, for instance, uh, this prompt generate is uh, stuff from StylePile gets added into the prompt as it gets sent so that it can flush it out. So, in this case, uh, I've selected unbelievable for the conceptual direction of it, 3D rendering. Uh, is the image type that we're going to produce. Uh, I've set the bias in it toward about 1.3. Uh, the direction of it is towards un ultra realistic. Uh, and I want the mood to be random. So these, these images will change a bit. Um, I've also set the CFG scale here to about 16, which makes it follow fairly closely to the, the prompt. And I'll show you a couple of different uh, ways that we can work with that. Uh, I've also uh, referenced a couple of artists. Mike Winkleman, who is Beeple, uh, otherwise known as Beeple, is the artist that we're choosing here. And then someone named Adolf Kozarek. I don't know who that is. A couple of different art movements that I wanted to uh, uh, reference. And uh, and so all of those, all of these factors will be added by StylePile into this prompt. So let's hit the Generate button and see what happens. And you'll notice that over here on the uh, uh, where we're monitoring our output file, that it will show us the progress as it begins to do the 30 uh, samples, sampling steps that's going to do per each of these images. So we'll uh, we'll have a total of 120 samples that will be taken, but over four images. It also nicely prints out what your prompt is. So you can see how that was constructed with the additions of the style pile information. And it's a really good way to learn how to construct prompts. Um, it's not enough to just put a simple sentence. You gotta know where to weight things and how to try and steer it towards what it is you're trying to accomplish. So now we're starting on our second iteration. So once we're done with this one, we'll have 60 of our 120 done. And the way this works is, is is through noise. So you can see how the image over here starts really noisy. Uh, and then it, it gets recursively run through the model, run through the processes, and uh, refines, or becomes refined over time. Each time it generates a new uh, seed. And you can reuse these seeds to, to refine and reproduce uh, a particular image that you like. So here's our four sets that we've got. I said male and female, and it looks like we've got mostly male or some hybrid thereof. Some more males. There's a couple of females down here. There's a nice mix of people who look like they're having fun working on computers. And even more, having all sorts of fun. 
All right. Uh, see what we can do by just changing the concept. Let's make it sophisticated. Let's make it a photo, uh, ultra realistic mood. Let's make it be uh, evil. How about that? Or actually angry. Yeah, we want everyone to be angry. And uh, we can, instead of hipster art, let's go. Uh, oh, we already did photorealism. Let's go solar punk. How about that? And we're going to turn photorealism up a little higher. And we'll turn solar punk actually up a little bit too. And let's change one of our artists. Let's go uh, Gertrude Amber Abercrombie. I don't know who that is, but it should have a big effect. So just changing those few parameters, uh, we should get something quite a bit different. almost a cityscape it looks like now and the interesting thing the good thing about style pile the way it's beneficial is is that you know once you get a handle for the way that it's thinking uh, you can see how it reconfigures your prompt down here in the bottom uh, using your original prompt as the source and so you can learn in the process of of that how to begin to shape your own prompts without using style pile for for instance you know the unbelievable professional 3d rendering is only actually i think this is from the previous iteration it won't show the new prompt until this last last set finishes uh, but you'll see how weighting and how parentheses are used in order to um, to shape the direction of the uh, generation process. Boom. All right. So here's our new, our, our new prompt, sophisticated photo, blah, 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 blah. All right. Still looks pretty 3D. I love the little head heads that everyone has here. Very nice. Looks like the future of teaching. All right, so, and then, uh, of course, you can come back over to your image browser and uh, take a look at the images that you've produced to now, and then you can take them and up-res them, manipulate them further, in-paint with them, uh, do all sorts of stuff to take them where you want them to be. All right, and once you're done, um, all you got to do is you can uh, close your monitoring of the output file by hitting Control C. And then what you should do if you're done working is free up the GPU resources that you've reserved. So if you type S-Q-U-E-M-I-N-E, S-Q-U-E-U-E, S-Q-U-E-U-E-M-I-N-E, -E, then it will list uh, your running jobs. And notice that you have a job ID over here. So you copy that to your clipboard and you go S cancel and paste in that job number and hit enter. And then when you check your S your Q, You'll notice your job has been closed, which means you've given the time back. And then you can log out of Hypergator just by typing exit. Voila.